If you haven't yet done so, please pause the video to read the question or to reread it. In this question, we are asked to calculate the average acceleration of a falling tennis ball. From the definition of average acceleration, we know that we're going to need the final velocity, the initial velocity, and then the time interval during which the tennis ball is in contact with the ground. And the phrase, in contact with the ground, is actually a key phrase, because what we actually need is the initial velocity of the tennis ball immediately before it hits the ground. And then we're also going to need the final velocity of the tennis ball immediately after it leaves the ground to go back upward. We will also need the time interval during which the tennis ball is in contact, but that part of the question is easy because that was given to us as 12 milliseconds. Thus, our first task becomes to calculate the initial velocity of the tennis ball immediately before it hits the ground. Now, in order to do that, we're going to consider the motion of the ball as it's traveling towards the ground. We can consider this phase one of the motion. And we can call that the falling. Now during phase one of the motion, the initial velocity of the tennis ball was zero because it was dropped. The final velocity we don't yet know, so we'll leave that as an unknown. Now any object that's falling freely vertically through space has an acceleration equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We are also told that the tennis ball is dropped from a height of four meters. Now we've got to be careful when we label the four meters. We must be sure to put a negative sign in for the four meters because the ball is moving downward. From the equations of kinematics, we're going to be able to calculate the final velocity of the tennis ball the moment before it hits the ground. So take a look at the equations and see if you can figure out which one to use. You might want to pause the video. If you decided to use this one to calculate the final velocity, then you are in luck. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in some values here. After calculating the final velocity, you should have obtained a value of negative 8.85 meters per second. Now, when calculating that, your calculator might have returned a positive value for the final velocity, but you have to keep in mind that because the ball is falling downward, its final velocity must be negative. So we can label the final velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground as negative 8.85 meters per second. And the important thing to note is the following. Take a look at this picture and compare it with that picture up there you can see that the final velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground is actually going to be treated as the initial velocity for the part of the ball's motion during which it is actually contacting the ground. And that really is the key to this problem, is to take that final velocity and move it over here and use it as the initial velocity for the ball during the part of the motion where the ball is going to be in contact with the ground. Now our next task is to calculate the final velocity of the tennis ball immediately after it is in contact with the ground. So let's examine the phase two of the motion of the ball and that would be as the ball is returning back to a, a vertical height off of the ground. So we can call this phase two and this is instead of moving downward the ball is moving upward. So during phase two, we know that the ball is just leaving the ground and then it's moving upward and coming to rest at the top part of its motion. So why don't we go ahead and list some of the parameters that we know for this part of the motion. Now we don't know the initial velocity with which the ball leaves the ground, so we're going to go ahead and use uh, an unknown for that. The final velocity of the ball will be zero meters per second because it's returning to a maximum height. And any object that hits a maximum height has a final vertical velocity of zero meters per second. The acceleration, of course, is still negative 
and the height that the tennis ball travels on its way upward is 2 meters. And we're going to keep this as positive 2 meters because the ball is moving upward relative to where it started. So we're going to need to use the equations of kinematics again. See if you can pause the video and determine which equation to use. And it looks like, in fact, we're going to use that same equation again. So we have the final velocity equal to the initial velocity plus... So we can go ahead and plug in the parameters. And you should have calculated an initial velocity of 6.26 meters per second. So that's the velocity with which the ball will leave the ground. Now let's remember that the velocity of the ball before it hit the ground was actually negative 8.85 meters per second. And then the velocity of the ball immediately after it left the ground is the velocity that we just calculated, 6.26 meters per second. So it's now very easy to calculate the acceleration of the ball during the time that it's actually in contact with the ground. So remember that acceleration was the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval. And if we plug in our known information, and we'll divide by the given time, which was the 12 milliseconds, note we'll have to convert that to seconds in order for the units to be in standard form. So when all is said and done, we calculate the average acceleration to be 1,260 meters per second squared, approximately. And since the acceleration turned out to be positive, then the direction of the acceleration is, in fact, upward. And that'll answer both parts A and part B of the question.